Hi, this is Dan from Cicadamania.com, and these are 17 facts about 17-year cicadas. 1. Periodical Cicada Names They're called periodical cicadas because they emerge periodically, and not annually. They're called 17-year cicadas because they arrive every 17 years. The genus of the various species is called magic cicada, and I believe William T. Davis came up with that in 1925. If you think about it, they are kind of magical. Historically, they've been called flies, grasshoppers, and locusts. People in the New World probably called them locusts because they reminded them either of the locusts of the Bible or locusts of the Old World, of the Middle East, that would arrive in terrifying numbers and consume all the vegetables and food to be found. Of course, cicadas don't do the second Bar, they do arrive in large numbers. According to Gene Kritsky's book, Periodical Cicadas, The Plague and the Puzzle, the first time there were called locusts that we know about was in 1666 by someone named Oldenburg. Of course, a true locust is really just a grasshopper. Gone a little crazy. Grasshopper on steroids, as someone might say. Look at those giant hind legs. Look at those mouth parts made to masticate vegetable matter. This is definitely not a cicada. But, because it's large and they arrive in, a, in huge numbers, the average person might get confused. Number two. Guess what? There's 13-year cicadas, too. The four species of 13-year cicadas are 1. Magic Cicada Tradecim 2. Magic Cicada Neo Tradecim 3. Magic Cicada Tradecassini, and for Magic Cicada Tradecula. The broods that feature them are brood 19, 22, and 23. Number three, eye color. Most of the Magic Cicada you see, they have red eyes, reddish orange eyes, but they can also have white eyes, blue eyes, yellow eyes, and even multicolored eyes. Just about every eye color but green. Four, the Mazospora cicadina fungus attacks magic cicadas. So this is a fungus that destroys the cicadas' abdomen, their sex organs, really. In the males, they actually start behaving like females, and they'll flick their wings like females will and attract other males. This fungus is the one predator, so to speak, that's able to get around the long 17-year cicada life cycle and it does spread during mating. Number five, power tools or lawnmowers. This is a fun one, kinda. So cicadas are attracted to vibrating machinery and that could be a saw, a power drill, a lawnmower, anything that sort of vibrates mechanically. The cicadas think it's a cicada or a chorus of cicadas so all the other cicadas are attracted to it, so if you have a power tool or you're mowing the lawn, the cicadas will land on you. Our advice, our pro tip, if you will, mow the lawn or do your power tool stuff in the morning or later in the day when the cicadas are less active and will be less likely to harass you. Number six, cicadas have five eyes. So they have those two big, large compound eyes. And then they have these three simple eyes. They're called Ocelli, O-C-E-L-L-I, and we believe they're used to detect light and darkness. And since there's three, I bet that they could probably use them to triangulate the direction of the sun or shadows created by leaves or predators. But again, there's five eyes. Number seven, people eat them. Barbecue cicadas. Popcorn cicadas, cicada po'boys, cicada pralines, cicada burgers, cicada pasta, cicada ice cream, cicada pizza, cicada cookies. Any way you can think about it, people will cook a cicada. And this has been true going back to the Native Americans and the settlers that came to America uh, once the cicadas emerged, they ate them. Hey, it's a new food source, I guess. Um...
I say avoid it, and the one reason is because cicadas are known accumulators of mercury. Uh, we actually gather them, and and folks test them for mercury. So they've been underground for a long time, absorbing chemicals, particularly mercury. So you might not want to eat them. Although I've never tried eating a cicada myself, I do hear that the texture is sort of like wet cardboard and they taste kind of like piney shrimp. So in other words, they taste probably like those trees that hang from rear view mirrors of cars. Number eight, animals eat them. Pretty much if it has a mouth, it's going to eat the cicada. Uh, and that, that's your dog, maybe your cat, uh, and then any kind of wild animal. Raccoons, squirrels, birds, turkeys. Well, turkey's a bird. Um, they're going to eat them if they find this uh, cicada. Uh, but that's part of the cicada's strategy. They come in, out in such huge numbers that they satiate the hunger of predators, which include your family dog, and they're so full, just like being stuffed at their Thanksgiving dinner, that the next wave, if you will, the next day maybe, of cicadas will um, get right past the predators because the predators are too full of cicadas to even bother with them. Sick to their stomach of cicadas. One note for pet owners, um, dogs and cats can choke on the cicadas, if a wing gets lodged in sideways, or if they just gorge themselves. So, so keep an eye on your pets, your dogs and your cats. Um, make sure that they're not choking on any of the cicadas. They might get over it. There's so many. It's like a feast that, you know, just like someone feasting themselves at the, the local buffet, they might choke on them. So keep an eye on your pets. And, of course, also if your neighbors hosed them down with pesticides, that's not going to be healthy for your dog either. It's not good. And of course, mercury. Number nine, they eat tree fluids. So cicadas don't eat leaves or vegetables. They actually drink what they eat. And what they drink is a particular tree fluid called xylem. They pro probably also absorb phloem too. Um, but xylem is the main component of their diet, so to speak. And uh, they also have a lot of bacterial symbionts, at least two main bacteria, and one of them breaks up into like 20 different variants of it. It's complicated, but those bacteria help them digest the nutrients that are in the uh, xylem, and then they that's their food, essentially. Um, if they were down underground eating cake for 17 years, they'd probably be as big as a refrigerator, but xylem isn't that nutritious, uh, so they, they're pretty, they stay pretty small. Plus, they're busy underground. I'll get to that in a second. They're working off those calories. Number 10, periodical cicadas pee. So if you're outside, you may notice uh, like it's like a rain or a sprinkling. You say, how could it be raining on me? It's sunny outside. Well, uh, that's a cicada peeing on you. Sorry. Um, well, cicadas drink fluids as you know, well as eat fluids, as I've talked about. But they drink to refresh themselves and... During that process, they're going to absorb uh, phloem, and which has a lot of sugar. And then when they excrete that, uh, it's the liquid that comes out is a little sweet, and people actually call it honeydew. Who's tasting cicada pee? I don't know. It's not me, but it's called honeydew, and it's called that because it's sweet. And yes, cicadas pee. Uh, the cicada hat is there just in case, you know, if you wore the cicada hat, it would protect your hair from cicada pee. Gross, but practical. Number 11, cicada sound. The sound that periodical cicadas are known for is produced by the males only. And the males have these organs called timbals, which they vibrate with muscles, and the vibration is actually uh, amplified because the insides are hollow. Um, the reason why they make these sounds is really to attract females. They attract females, they'll mate, and make more cicadas for future generations. 
they have various calls. They have alarm calls if they're being disturbed. Someone is rustling their jimmy, so to speak. If uh, they have different court calls, calls just to attract the female, and then they have choruses when a bunch of them get together to attract females. Uh, they have something called a percula, which covers up their eardrums, and what their eardrum is called is a tympanum. That's technically not like an eardrum we have, but that's the organ. And one thing interesting they, thing they do is when they call, they use the opercula to cover up the tympana so they themselves uh, don't hear the, the intense sound and preserve their own hearing, so to speak. Females can make a sound. Females make a sound using their wings, and you could actually trick a male into singing by imitating the female sound. And you could do that by snapping your fingers or using a light switch, or I use the... Uh, the zoom button on my camcorder. Number 12, there's billions and billions of them. Like Carl Sagan would say about stars, except these are cicadas, and there's, of course there's less cicadas than stars. But anyway, the, the point is, why are there so many cicadas? And the reason why we believe is something called predator satiation. And, and I mentioned this earlier back in the animals part, but the idea again is that there's so many of them because they'll fill up any of the predators, any of the raccoons, humans, pets, whatever's out there waiting to eat for them. Or not waiting, really. They're not waiting. They don't know they're going to be there. Um, they're going to fill up all these animals' bellies. And then the next day, the animals are like, you know, enough, enough. I had enough of these cicadas. I'm going to just lay down and take a nap. Uh, I have the itis. I'm going to fall asleep. And so the next wave of cicadas make it through, and they climb up the tree, and they get up in the tree, and they sing, and they fly around, um, all thanks to the first uh, group of cicadas that made it out of the ground and satiated the hunger of any predators that were around. So kind of nice of them, right? Take one for the team. Number 13, they damage wimpy trees. What happens is a female cicada lays her eggs in a branch. She makes these slots or grooves using her ovipositor or ovipositor. And occasionally that kills the branch. That seems a little counterintuitive. She wouldn't want a branch to die that your babies are in. But it happens on occasion. And if your tree is a smaller tree, like a small ornamental like four foot tall or so, uh, if enough of the branches die, the tree itself might die. So if you're concerned at all, what you might want to do is wrap your tree in some netting. We believe that's the best way to counteract it because uh, you put tape around the, the tree trunk that's not going to stop them from flying in from another yard, another tree. So if you're concerned at all, Wrap that tree. Now, if you have a bigger tree, like an oak tree, maple tree, an elm, like a big, hardy, strong American tree, uh, you don't have to worry about that. Obviously, big, giant trees really aren't affected by that. Yes, they'll get they'll get um, damaged branches, and uh, but they'll get past it. When the cicada, when the damage occurs. It's called flagging because they look like brown flags hanging from the tree. And cicada researchers will actually use that to uh, document where cicadas have bit. So to recap, if you have a wimpy tree, you might want to wrap it with some netting to keep the cicadas from laying eggs in the branches, which will kill a branch or two or too many, which would compromise the life of your wimpy tree. Number 14, stragglers. So, on occasion, a periodical cicada will emerge before it's supposed to, or after it's supposed to. In the case of 17-year cicadas, they'll typically emerge 14 years early. In the case of a 13-year cicada, they'll emerge four years late. It doesn't have to be four years, it could be one year, it could be two years. But the typical is, is again, if it's a 17-year cicada, it emerges four years early. 13 years, 4 years late. Uh, what you're looking at now on the screen is the probability chart. 
So why would they do this? They might, one theory is that it's too overcrowded underground. Like there's just, the parents were so prolific that underground is just full of them. And some of them just say, you know, I got to get out. Um, another idea or theory is that that is how periodical cicadas form new broods. They, a group of them sort of breaks off, emerges early and forms a new brood. Again, these are the theories. I don't have definitive answers why. But it's cool, right? Number 15, prime numbers. Isn't it interesting that 17 and 13 are both prime numbers? Prime numbers being numbers that are only divisible by themselves into number one. There's a lot of theories that have to do with um, these prime numbers and, and how the cicadas evolved and uh, how they allow the cicadas to sort of uh, avoid uh, gaining a predator that specifically uh, predates them. Um, interesting. Number 16, their color helps warm them up. That's right. Cicadas are cold-blooded, so they rely on the warmth of the sun and the air around them to warm up. The warmer they are, the easier it is for them to fly and sing and do other cicada stuff. And because their skin is black, that absorbs the heat of the sun and helps them warm up more quickly. Number 17, they are not sleeping underground. So there's a popular rumor or myth. I see a lot of cartoons on the internet about this. Uh, saying cicadas are sleeping when they're underground. They're not sleeping on the ground. They're building tunnels. They're building cells, which is sort of like a special alcove that they live in, especially protects them from floodwaters. They're looking for roots. They're drinking from roots. Cicadas actually go through four different life stages underground. So they're not sleeping. Yes, during the colder months, they slow down. They lessen their activity. Um... But they're not sleeping. They're, they're not like taking a nap for 17 years and then they come out. So enough of that. Makes for funny cartoons, I guess. But they're not sleeping on the ground. They're not. And they're not. They're, they're, they're growing. And they're preparing for the one day when they come out of the ground and they make a racket. But they're not sleeping. Not sleeping. Not sleeping. As usual, visit and share uh, with cicadamania.com. Report your cicada sightings to magiccicada.org. And you can also find us on Twitter. Thanks for listening.